people were stopped and killed and broken in houses and stealing money and stuff. I was scared um, to walk to school and do. I don't feel safe in Odium because every day you hear of something and it makes you think that could have been me. It's becoming a re- uh, everyday occurrence hearing this one is being murdered or that one has been raped. Not a nice place to be. Modium at night. Private security guards employed by the Metro Council are looking for cable thieves. Tonight they caught one. But cable theft is the least of Laudium's crime problems. The traditionally Indian suburb west of Pretoria feel they are caught in a bad dream. The light of day reveals that Laudium is only half a town. The other half is Ikeralang, the neighboring informal settlement. The wealth gap between Laudium and Ikeralang is stark. They are only separated by this wall. But for the residents, they could just as well be on different planets. This is the story of Laudium and Ikeralang. Wasit Darwood is a police reservist in Laudium. Sometimes, like, you get, find your common uh, robbery. You find a guy that, uh, robbing a guy, maybe walking here through a bushes or what. They rob you here and they run into the spot again. And it's difficult to even find them because there's too many checks around there. You don't know where exactly they run into. Laudium is a major employment hub in the area for many people from Iteraleng and nearby Asijville. But residents feel this access comes at a price. Everybody set up here. Be it business, be it a uh, household, because according to statistics, there's so many household robberies, so many people have been murdered uh, for uh, little cash, little or no cash. Vinay Chagan owns Jivan's wholesaler in Laudium. He has been the victim of four armed robberies. During the course of the morning, it was very early, it was on a Saturday morning, around about 8.30, we had just opened the shop, and we were still cleaning up, and we had one or two customers, and after serving them, we were surprised by gunmen. They uh, threw me down on the floor, kicked me in my face, which was very, very severe pain, and I didn't know what was happening. And of course, they dragged me, and then they took me into my office, uh, where they made me to open the safe. They kept on kicking me on my back, on my ribs, and uh, I had uh, eight fractured ribs. And uh, then I had a punctured lung as well, and uh, I was dazed. And of course, then I was, you know, struggling to get some air in, because uh, my blood was going through my lungs with the uh, uh, damage they'd done to me. Vinay was in intensive care for 10 days and was in and out of hospital for six months. After being robbed for the fourth time, his insurance company told him he has become an insurance risk. Benet now has no insurance. My entire life, uh, I've been trading amongst our people here in Lodim, and Lodim is my home, and I didn't want to resettle. My home is around here, and my customers, I know them. Benet's children, however, are thinking of immigrating. It seems that no one will take over Jivan's wholesalers from him when he retires. Even in Itera Lang, Laudium is notorious for crime. I want to live in Laudium. I, I don't like Laudium. Too much crime. Nazir Nur Mohammed is the editor and owner of the local newspaper, The Laudium Sun. He has been covering crime in the area for many years. I believe that the resident of Laudium still there under siege. Uh, it's common to see security guards here. It's common to see high walls. It's common to see electric fencing. The community has lost confidence in the police. About 70% of crimes committed in the area, uh, the perpetrators, people behind it, people who give information, whether security guards or domestic workers.
So obviously, the community will be concerned about that. Domestic workers are substitute mothers for many Laudian children, but this bond of trust is breaking down. Many of Laudian's domestic workers and security guards live in Ikerelang. When you ask people here about crime in Laudian, you quickly hear a theme. A lot of people they are working in Laudian, but uh, more especially ladies. They are working by the houses here, but they don't pay them a right. You see, people, they're working hard and they don't pay them enough money. Maybe they working 30 days, they're getting uh, 500 rand. And Sometimes I used to have that guy who was working here. Actually, I used to know him. He ran away because he took some money then he bought house. And then he found a lot of money. A lot of money. After the break, stereotypes lead to murder. She wasn't just murdered. She seemed to have been bludgeoned, murdered, and murdered after being dead and gone. Suraya Muhammad's whole family is in Laudian. On the 17th of November last year, that family was ripped apart. The morning of Suraya's murder, unfortunately, we started off badly because there was a hijacking in Laudian. Also a family person, and uh, the, pa the girl, the daughter involved was taken away to one of the squatter areas. And we were concentrating on that because we tried with many community members to get her back home. And while that was happening, we got a call that there's a robbery at Rashida's place. But when we got there, there was thousands of people, really. Everybody was hysterical place was cordoned off, and when you see a place cordoned off by police, there's just one thought, that the worst has happened. Slowly, information about the scene inside leaks out to the crowd. Emotions were high, and Rashida's family were dazed and bewildered. All, all in shock at the moment. We don't know what, what to do next. The police used... Uh, the back entrance of the house to get inside the house because that was the only door that was open, the kitchen door. When they got inside, they found uh, the helper lying on the floor. She was tied on her hands and the knees. And uh, they went to investigate further inside the house as to what was happening. So when they went to, as they were proceeding to the other uh, part of the house, they noticed that there was blood on the passage and there was also blood on the in, inside the bathroom. When they got to the main bedroom, they found that it was ransacked and uh, the lady was found uh, lying on the floor dead. It's not too clear at this stage what could be the motive for the killing because nothing uh, at this stage we can say that it was taken from the scene. She wasn't just murdered. She seemed to have been bludgeoned, murdered, and murdered after being dead and gone. You don't see this type of crime. I mean, there are a lot of murders, and they just concentrated on the area around the hood, you know, there was a terrible motive behind this. That's why I said it was very unusual. She was gagged, she was strangled, um, her jaw was broken. Everything that was negative was done to her. And obviously being so vulnerable, being in the bath. So that is really not a normal murder. Not that any more murder is really normal. Sara Malatsi, Rashida Ahmed's 21-year-old domestic worker, had apparently also been assaulted. When I arrived there, she was at the front door laying down uh, unconscious. They gave her just one smack or something, but nothing really serious to, to the domestic. Oh, you said she was lying there? Yes, she was lying on the front door. And how did she look? Uh, not bad. Uh, just her mouth, little blood here, and that's it. Nothing really serious. While Sara was lying unconscious and her employer Rashida's body was still in the house, fear and paranoia started circulating throughout Laudian. The maid left um, guys in and they murdered her in her own house. Thugs came into the house, maid was involved uh, and um, tied up, cut up. She was brutally beaten to death in the comfort of her, of her own home. Police confirmed that despite the brutality of the murders, very little of value was taken, a seeming contradiction of the belief held by many Ikerelang residents 
that Indian people stash money inside their houses. These people, they used to keep their money in their houses. They don't use banks, and they don't, they don't trust blacks. The perception has become so widespread that some are tying it to the rising crime rate. This even prompted a front page warning in the local newspaper. After the murder, all eyes turned to Etera Leng. At that time, Sarah Malachi was living in Etera Leng with her boyfriend, an army reservist. We tracked down her half-brother and her aunt. I only hear that it was November that she's around how day. Because I did, uh, what I know is she was supposed to be at school, but uh, because she met the friends and then they decided to come to Pretoria to look for a job, as they promised, their friends promised her that there's a job in Lodiam and then you can get a, a job. I remember the last time when I told her, she said, oh, now I'm working. This woman pays me a lot of money. I say, how much? She says, no. She gave me 600, but she promised she gave me 700. Because she's a, she's a little girl. So that's why he's happy to get that money. Cello is a military paramedic. When he returned from deployment, he heard that his younger sister was going to appear in court. Hey, the, the community from Lodium, they were all gathered, got that they were having some placard in their hands. Was it a kind of a scary, aggressive situation? Yeah, they were scary because they were also pointing fingers at me. And because I was wearing the military uniform, I was not aware that there is a court case. There is a court, is a court case. I thought maybe she has been arrested, maybe she, she will meet somebody around. Was that the day that they thought that you were the boyfriend? Yes, it's the day that most of the Indians, they were suspecting that I'm a boyfriend. As they said that the boyfriend is a soldier. The Indians, if they are using the other language, they, they are not only using English, they are also using their own language. But some of the others, they were swearing, and you can hear them swearing. One guy, he was just telling me that I'm a, I'm a son of a bitch. Stella was mistook for Sarah Malachi's boyfriend, a military reservist suspected of having masterminded the murder. According to my younger sister, the guy used to ask about money. Where do they put money in the house? Do they, are, they, are they having money? They say. And he was pushing it as you can see that these guys, they, they buy presents for the lady, they buy clothes for the lady. So it means that they're having the money in the house. In the presence of a magistrate, Malachi confessed to opening the security gate for her boyfriend and his accomplices. In the subsequent hearings, she tried to withdraw this confession. Sara Malachi remains a mystery. Who she is depends on who's looking. The few sightings that I've seen her, she's totally remarkable. Absolutely. Being very young, having been involved in such a serious crime, you would have expected really a face of remorseness. But the fact that she showed nothing whatsoever shows that... Um, you know, you, you couldn't even want to go up to her to have a word with her or, or even have some kind of uh, forgiveness towards her. That is not out of the picture. From the family, I think the, he was working under a good family. She was also good because of why she was doing a daily job. Then the problem occurs after the boyfriend because the boyfriend came in, then came in with a disaster. After the break, paranoia boils over in Laudium. That is me. Yes, it's me. Hey, you bitch, where's my man? I want my man, you bitch. Friday afternoon at the Dar es Salaam Mosque in Laudium. Muslims from all backgrounds gather for worship. But talk of the horrific murder of Rashida Ahmed reaches even this sanctuary. It wasn't the first murder. And then subsequent to that, a month before that, we had a murder. And after that, we still have robberies and crime that is right and rampant. It's disappointing. And you feel so helpless because seemingly the people, the victims, do not get the empathy, the face value that the criminals seem to get from the system. The murder, uh, it was just too much for the community. There had to be an outburst. There had to be responses, and, and people were just, it was like people wanted revenge, you know, they wanted something, they wanted 
who do we go to, who do we blame, who do we call. So you were just looking at anybody and everybody and saying, but why and why? You wanted questions that couldn't be answered. I do know that many people are not taking on assistance as one would have earlier. And there are people who cannot do without the domestic workers and so forth. But they are treated very, very carefully. And um, we actually are at a point where, you know, if you want to have a shower, you'd want your family, person or friend around so that at least while you are in the shower, somebody is monitoring the house. That's trust is broken, yes, between domestic workers and employers, yes, on an employer employee relationship, yes. We found out firsthand about the domestic worker war in Laudium when we met Wadza, a Zimbabwean. Wadza works as a domestic worker for a Laudian man and his wife until jewelry and a large amount of cash disappeared. The suspicion fell on her and Timothy, the gardener. We didn't see the money and we don't even know there was money inside. Say, okay, you must help me to look for that money, this and that. Okay. So we think that we're not trusting anymore. Start to look in the toy rooms everywhere. We managed to track down Wadza's ex-employer, who spoke to us on the condition that we keep his identity hidden. We are four people in the house, excluding the kids. Uh, well, I'm counting the garden boy and we're counting some domestic. Uh, if something goes missing, it can only be one of the four adults to fall in the house, nobody else, because there's no forced entry, there's no visible breakage. According to Wadza, things quickly when turned we, ugly. When we were there, then doctor take the mop which was our behind our room then he start to hit me then say oh you be sir start to hit me yeah, hit me say you be where's my man i want my man you be then i saw him shooting his gun so that time i sit on the stool outside the room where i sit there. then he come i saw him was loading the bullet I saw him was cooking the gun. Then he come to me, pointing the gun. Where is my man? Then I said, no, boss, I didn't shoot your man. Then he hit me near the bed. Her employer's version of the story is very different. All that unfortunate they were screaming and shouting and chanting and all of the things in the leg, language and say that you can never find your thing. And this and this and this. I told my wife, we're going to get up aggressive. Just leave them. Let's go in the house. And we went in the house because the kids started crying. The kids became traumatic about it. So I said, just let's get in the house and lock them out. And we left them there. And then he started running away. And that's when I went after him. The accused gardener fled to the police. And his employer went to look for him. Meanwhile, an angry mob was converging on the house. Then the brother for the doctor come. He was with two policemen. Those two policemen, they were standing. Then Dr. Brother told those two policemen, hey, can you turn around and face that side? So when those policemen, they turned that side, start to hit me in my head. Then I start to bleed. So when he sees that I'm bleeding, then he left me. The allegations of the sort, and I'd, like I said, I wasn't there. I was busy looking for Timothy, and I can get like 110 witnesses. I wasn't there. The person who was there was my wife and the kids who were in the house. But who was there is a whole lot of people, neighbors, friends, family, community policing, foreign people, neighborhood watch, armed response, the whole work. And you know what? Those people were not happy people. Very, very angry. And you know what? Maybe not as angry as in the time of Rashida's incident or whatever, but people were angry. If there was something we had taken that money, for sure right now, I was not going to be in South Africa, or even though they take out a gun for me. I was not to be in South Africa. Right now I've got nowhere to sleep. I've got no food to eat. I think she's very well connected to the police. She knows what to do, how to act. When we got to the police station, there were a whole lot of black police that came there and patted her on the back and were very sympathetic to us. But for us, they couldn't give a damn. And two policemen said, there's the guy, arrest him, throw him in the cell. And the other uh, white cops said, no, 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 no. There's a procedure here. You don't just do that here. Right after the murder of Rashida Ahmed, the Minister of Safety and Security, Nati Mchetwa, visited Laudium and promised new anti-crime measures. A community policing forum is being set up. 
but whether these initiatives will be able to overcome the backed-up resentment between Lordium and Etera Leng is unclear. Maybe one of the, 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 the domestic workers is working inside the houses. He saw the money always, but when they, they, they're supposed to give it, uh, pay them uh, the, 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 the enough money, they don't pay. And they're waiting for Indians, but after that, maybe they chase him away. They don't pay him the, the, the money. And then you see, you're going to feel hard. The, the heart is going to feel, feel very, 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 very bad. And then it's going to call people maybe to come and rob them. Brought together by economic need, but separated by mutual resentment, Lordium and Etera Leng's symbiotic relationship is turning bitter. Sara Malachi has become the focus of hate. She represents Lordium's worst fear, a hostile outsider inside. I think one of the reasons why, why he did not grant the things was that because he feared for her life, for her life, and he even said that I witnessed it. I'm not, not, I might not be quoting right correctly, but something to the effect that uh, I've seen with these family members, I've seen the community, I've seen them through the eyes that they want justice. And I fear that uh, they might take justice in their own hands. Uh, how do you think um, Sarah Malachi is seen now? Oh, I can assure you, if she has to walk down the road, she wouldn't like.